Floyd is used to having the refs do whatever he wants and he wasn't getting his way this time. It was so embarrassing. Floyd, you're 50 years old. You're a legend in the sport. I've stood up for you in countless interviews, including Shannon Sharp's podcast last week. But you have to stop embarrassing yourself. Oscar De La Hoya has just exposed Floyd Mayweather's exhibition fights, revealing that they're all rigged and it's just a money grab. Mayweather is no stranger to controversy, whether he's throwing punches in the ring or making headlines outside of it. This was proven once again when, just days after facing off against John Gotti III in an exhibition match, he found himself embroiled in a lawsuit. At 47, Mayweather continues to captivate audiences, raising eyebrows among fans and friends alike. Even Oscar De La Hoya couldn't resist winning in on the situation. In the rematch against 31-year-old Gotti III, Mayweather came out swinging with intense aggression. While fans relished the nostalgic vibe, the bout itself was mostly a letdown, dominated by one side. The real entertainment, however, came when the best ever nearly pushed the fight into disarray, arguing with the referee during the second round. After landing a shot to the back of Gotti's head and receiving a warning, Mayweather had the official replaced. The 51-year-old De La Hoya took to Instagram to talk about how Mayweather got the referee switched since he had entered interrupted him. De La Hoya remarked that the event had been a complete disaster, causing the crowd to boo in the arena at the end. He noted that Floyd Mayweather was upset because the referee had told him to stop hitting behind the head, something Mayweather wasn't accustomed to as he usually had referees who did what he wanted. De La Hoya found the situation embarrassing and suggested that Mayweather, at 50 years old and a legend in the sport, should stop humiliating himself. Floyd Mayweather fought another exhibition against Gotti last Saturday. A real sh the crowd booing in the arena at the end but in the middle of the second round floyd literally had the referee swapped out he didn't like that the referee told him to stop hitting behind the head the former boxer turned promoter showed support for his old rival, highlighting his accomplishments and revealing how he had defended him on numerous occasions, including in interviews. However, even Oscar De La Hoya recognized that with a 50-0 record, it was time for Mayweather to change his ways. The California native also addressed the recent lawsuit against Mayweather, in which he neglected to pay nearly $4 million for the jewelry. De La Hoya further commented that while he understood life could be difficult and expensive, he urged Mayweather to prioritize his legacy. He he expressed concern that no one wanted to remember Mayweather in this way, acknowledging the challenges of making money and the even greater challenge of keeping it. De La Hoya stated that he was rooting for Mayweather and encouraged him to turn things around. I know life is hard, I know life is expensive, but come on dude, put your legacy first. Nobody wants to remember you like this. And it gets worse, your jeweler filed a lawsuit against you in Miami. And many are saying you're gonna have to sell off your assets. I hate seeing this happen, bro. After voicing his concerns and offering guidance to money, De La Hoya shifted his focus to his former protege, Canelo Alvarez. Alvarez had recently passed on a bout with Terence Crawford and opted not to collaborate with His Excellency Turki Alalshik on his ambitious venture. The Golden Boy central figure highlighted how His Excellency Turki Alalshik was committed to keeping real boxing thriving and orchestrating the best fights. This dedication was precisely why Alvarez held disdain for the Saudi advisor. He added, which is why Canelo doesn't like him, because he is demanding everybody to like fight the very best. Canelo, f you. De La Hoya hinted at revealing more details about Alvarez's situation in the upcoming week. In the meantime, the Mexican champion is preparing to face off against Edgar Berlanga on September 14th at T-Mobile Arena, leaving the success of the event still uncertain. Mayweather's initial clash with Gotti, the grandson of notorious New York crime boss John Gotti, turned chaotic in June 2023, as a massive brawl erupted in the ring, forcing the fight to be halted in the sixth round. During Saturday night's bout in Mexico City, a similar controversy loomed as Panamanian referee Hector Afu unexpectedly exited the ring in the second round, prompting Mexican official Alfredo Urusquieta to step in as his replacement. It was reported that Afu was infuriated by Mayweather's objections after the referee ruled the American's left hook on Gotti as illegal. At 47, Mayweather kept his dominance over Gotti when the fight resumed. Gotti's lack of punches earned boos from the 22 Zero, zero, 0 strong crowd in the Mexican capital. Gotti's aggression picked up in the fourth round, spurred on by the crowd's boos, but Mayweather rarely appeared flustered and maintained his dominance throughout the fight. Neither fighter's career record is affected by the outcome, and no official winner was announced. With a perfect 50-fight career record, Mayweather retired in 2017. He's still fighting in exhibitions. His previous fight was against Logan Paul. On the other hand, Oscar De La Hoya recently said that he advised Canelo Alvarez not to face Floyd Mayweather back 
in 2013 and admitted the Mexican no longer likes him. The Golden Boy boss reflected on the present circumstances with Canelo, recalling the moment when the multiweight champion faced his first defeat. Mayweather asserted his dominance over Canelo, securing a closely contested majority decision. Judge C.J. Ross, who scored the bout a draw, faced significant criticism before retiring. Meanwhile, colleagues Dave Moretti and Craig Metcalf had at 116, 112, and 117, 111 in favor of Mayweather, respectively. World Boxing News scored every round for Mayweather that night. Out of 86 media scores, including WBNs, the average tally for the Mayweather versus Canelo fight was 119-109 in favor of Mayweather. De La Hoya, who was Canelo's agent at the time, gave Shannon Sharp guidance to the budding superstar on Club Shea Shea. He said, I told Canelo, do not fight Floyd because you're too young. You have no experience. He's 21 years old and he's flexing his muscles like I can take on Floyd. I'm the very best. Guess what you got schooled? It wasn't even close. When asked about the possibility of Canelo fighting YouTuber Jake Paul, the legendary De La Hoya remarked that his former protege no longer harbors any affection for his old mentor. He said, I can make it happen, but Canelo hates the shit out of me. It would be a lot of money, but it's not a legacy. I don't think Canelo has anything to prove. I think Canelo is obviously now fighting for the money, which I don't blame him for as long as he fights. But for instance, not take Benavidez, which the world is urging him to. It's bad for his reputation and for his legacy for not taking that prime fighter in his career. Benavidez has shifted his focus from Canelo and is now eyeing the winner of the October 12th showdown between Artur Baterbiev and Dmitry Bivol. However, the path may not be clear-cut for the Mexican monster. Canelo is also angling for a rematch with Bivol, should the latter achieve a similar victory over Baterbiev. Previously, Oscar de la Hoya dramatically asserted that the legendary Floyd Mayweather tried to lure Ryan Garcia away from him. He then boldly declared that Garcia remains loyal to him and Golden Boy Promotions. The connections to the 50-0-0 multiweight champion emerged when 25-year-old Garcia was seen training with him during early runs. This followed Garcia's public criticisms of De La Hoya and his promotion company in the lead-up to his fight with Oscar Duarte. De La Hoya added, Maybe he's slipping in some business. Hey, come sign with me, or this and that. Ryan's a loyal guy. He'll tell me if he wants to leave me or he wants to stay with me, plus we have a contract. Garcia is currently under a 12-month suspension from professional boxing after multiple positive tests for Osterine prior to his fight with Devin Haney, and he also failed to meet the maximum weight limit for the bout. He has been expelled from the WBC following a live stream where he directed racist remarks at both the Islamic community and black individuals. This controversy marks a rough period for him, which has been compounded by his first career defeat against Gervonta Davis in 2023. The rivalry between De La Hoya and Mayweather stands out as a defining chapter in contemporary boxing, epitomized by their highly anticipated 2007 showdown. This clash of De La Hoya, a 10-time world champion across six weight divisions, and the undefeated Mayweather captured the imagination of the sports world. Named The World Awaits, the fight took place at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas. It was one of the most eagerly anticipated matchups in history, drawing a packed crowd at the venue and capturing the attention of millions on pay-per-view. The outcome was decided when Mayweather emerged victorious by split decision after 12 intense rounds. He secured the WBC Super Welterweight title, having outmaneuvered De La Hoya's relentless aggression with his masterful counterpunching and defensive skills. Two judges awarded the fight to Mayweather, while one judge gave the edge to De La Hoya, marking a symbolic transition between boxing eras as De La Hoya retired roughly a year later in 2008. Here's the twist. In a showdown between two of the finest, only one can claim the win. Both competitors left it all in the ring, each determined to have their arm lifted in triumph after the final bell. However, on that fateful night, pretty boy Floyd Mayweather outshone De La Hoya, securing victory by split decision. Although De La Hoya felt he had triumphed, he has recently admitted to the crucial error that ultimately led to his defeat. On a recent episode of the Club Shea Shea podcast, retired NFL tight end Shannon Sharp interviewed Oscar De La Hoya, delving into his thoughts on their 2007 bout against pretty boy. Despite De La Hoya's well-known candor, he shared his reflections on the fight, particularly his emotions immediately 
following the final bell. When you are a fighter inside the ring and you hear the final bell rings, you know it in your heart, in your gut, and physically if you won or you lost. You just feel it. It's a sensation, De La Hoya said, recollecting his feelings on the fateful night. He further added that it didn't matter whether he was right or wrong because I just felt it. It's worth mentioning that during this time, Floyd Mayweather had just entered his prime days while De La Hoya was on the last legs of his career. In fact, De La Hoya would go on to retire from the sport two fights after his skirmish with Floyd Mayweather Jr. Looking back at it, De La Hoya claimed, I fought against the best Floyd Mayweather in his prime, you know, undefeated, so I was pretty proud of what I accomplished that night. However, that doesn't mean Oscar De La Hoya didn't make any mistakes that night, mistakes that lost him the fight even if it was by a close margin. You start thinking, okay, if I just cruise here, land a few punches, I have the first half won already, so if I could just one more round, I can win the fight. Seven, five, maybe a draw. De La Hoya explained his strategy while inside the ring with Floyd. He acknowledged this sort of strategy can quickly prove ineffective, which Oscar finally admitted after more than one decade, stating, obviously that night it was a big mistake. Floyd's professional boxing career concluded with an impeccable record, cementing his status as one of the wealthiest athletes globally. Yet Oscar De La Hoya believes there is one fighter who has what it takes to defeat Floyd. In the October 2018 edition of The Ring magazine, Oscar De La Hoya named the one fighter he thinks could have toppled Floyd Mayweather Jr. Looking back on his illustrious career, De La Hoya identified Manny Pacquiao as the sole boxer with the potential to best Mayweather. He highlighted Pacquiao's determination, conditioning, skill, power, and footwork as the key attributes that would have made him a formidable opponent for Mayweather. De La Hoya, who has squared off against both fighters in his career, highlighted Pacquiao's relentless style and adaptability in the ring as key factors that would give him the advantage over Mayweather. This praise underscores the deep respect he has for the Filipino boxing icon's skills. By this stage, the highly anticipated clash between Floyd Mayweather and Manny Pacquiao had already taken place. In a thrilling spectacle held in Las Vegas, Mayweather triumphed over Pac-Man with a unanimous decision, further solidifying his status as one of the greatest fighters of all time. Regardless, De La Hoya added, Mayweather Pacquiao would have been a lot different if they'd fought in their primes. Pacquiao would have beat Mayweather easy, absolutely. Even though their bout concluded 17 or so years ago, Oscar De La Hoya appears to still recall Floyd Mayweather's fight fairly clearly. During the peak of his career, Floyd Mayweather was celebrated for his unparalleled agility and defensive skills in the ring. Unlike many of his peers, he sustained minimal damage throughout his bouts, save for a few notable instances. As he transitioned into his Money Mayweather phase, his defensive mastery reached new heights. By the time he retired in 2017, he had amassed an impeccable record of 50-0. However, Oscar De La Hoya posits that had events unfolded differently in 2007, the narrative of Mayweather's career might have taken a different turn. The pair clashed in what became one of the most talked about bouts in recent memory, with Mayweather edging out a win through a split decision. Despite speculation that Oscar was nearing the end of his career, Oscar himself contends that he could have knocked out Floyd Mayweather if only Floyd Mayweather Sr. had been in his corner. Remarkably, Oscar has suggested that Mayweather Sr.'s absence was actually a selfless gesture on his part. On a recent Club Shay Shay podcast, Shannon Sharp discussed Floyd Mayweather Sr.'s noticeable absence from Oscar De La Hoya's corner ahead of the bout against Floyd Mayweather Jr. He questioned De La Hoya about whether having Mayweather Sr. in his corner could have potentially Eventually altered the fight's result. Knock him out. I would have knocked him out. I would knock him out. Oscar responded without skipping a breath. As Oscar's sheer confidence left sharp in disbelief, Oscar elaborated, Absolutely. If I was one year younger and had Senior in my corner, I would knock him out. Really. When Sharp probed Oscar further to confirm his confidence in Mayweather Senior's abilities to get him closer to a win, Oscar seemed determined, stating, Oh yeah, absolutely. He further added that later in life he had figured out how to counter Mayweather's famous Philly shell. The key he was, and the key is to that style, a jab. It opens up all the doors, Oscar said, recollecting the action in the ring decades ago. However, failing to realize the same late, Oscar added, when my jab failed me, it was over. I knew it in my heart, in my head. I knew it was over. However, this begs the question, what was Oscar's selfless act? In the midst of the podcast, the topic of defeating Floyd with a potential assist from Floyd Sr. sparked a memory for Oscar. He recalled that back in the day, he and his team had a rematch lined up with Floyd as per their agreement. To turn the tables and seek revenge for his previous defeat, Oscar had even considered bringing Mayweather Sr. on board as his trainer for this upcoming bout. However, 
He wanted too much money, Oscar revealed. He explained that he would have had to pay an enormous amount of money to Mayweather Sr., so he didn't go through with it. Even so, there was another reason at least, according to Oscar. He said, aside from money, morally, I think I just thought it was wrong. I think at the time they were having an issue. It's important to note that the relationship between Mayweather Sr. and his son has been fraught with tension, marked by a high-profile split in 2000. This fallout resulted in Roger Mayweather resuming training junior, following Sr.'s release from a five and a half year prison term for drug-related offenses. Regardless, Oscar continued, it happens in every family, so I said, no, I can't do this. I cannot do this to a family who has been in the business for a very long time. Oscar De La Hoya has immense respect for Floyd Mayweather Sr., the father of boxing legend Floyd Mayweather Jr., so much so that De La Hoya considered enlisting Mayweather Sr.'s expertise for his bout against his son. However, the $2 million fee demanded by Mayweather Sr., proved prohibitive for De La Hoya, a 1992 Olympic gold medalist. As a result, he chose to bring in Freddie Roach instead. For context, De La Hoya had previously been trained by Mayweather Sr. from 2001 to 2006. Pretending to be a world champion boxer didn't impress Floyd Mayweather Sr., and Oscar De La Hoya discovered that the hard way. Floyd Mayweather's impressive 50-0 record is a testament to his elite status largely attributed to the intense discipline he inherited from his father, a lesson De La Hoya came to understand through experience. Talking to Sharp about the Mayweather family mindset, De La Hoya explained, his father had something very unique. He was a sergeant. I think Floyd has that same attribute where it's like, he takes no shit from nobody, you know? After that, De La Hoya recalled the event that inspired him to respect Mayweather Sr. I remember one time Floyd Mayweather's father dumped a water bucket on me at 5 a.m. in the morning to wake me up to go run. Oscar reminisced, pointing out that for Floyd Mayweather Sr., the usual routine of a boxer doesn't change depending on star power. Nobody has ever done that, not to the golden boy, come on. And he did it, and I respected him from that day on. The boxer turned promoter respectfully remarked about Mayweather Sr. De La Hoya is convinced that had the legendary trainer been in his corner for his bout with Floyd Mayweather, he would have emerged victorious. If Floyd Mayweather had trained De La Hoya, he appeared to be confident that he could have not only defeated, but also knocked out Mayweather. Additionally, Oscar revealed that as his career progressed, he discovered a method to neutralize Floyd's Philly shell defense. He asserted that the secret to countering the style lies in mastering the jab. However, he revealed to Sharp that by the time there were talks about a rematch with Floyd, his jabs failed him. A flawless 50-0 boxing record typically earns a fighter immense admiration. But Floyd Mayweather's situation is a bit unconventional. While he certainly garners a significant fan base, he's also known for provoking strong reactions. Many people seem to relish disliking money. So what's behind this dynamic? According to longtime UFC commentator Joe Rogan, there might be a deeper explanation. Even in retirement, Floyd Mayweather continues to make waves in the world of combat sports. At 47, the undefeated boxing legend remains active, taking on exhibition matches that keep his name in the spotlight. His prowess has even garnered admiration from Joe Rogan, who praises Mayweather's remarkable ability to stir envy, a quality Rogan deeply respects. If you believe that only boxing enthusiasts harbor animosity toward Floyd Mayweather, you're gravely mistaken. When Pretty Boy made a cameo at WrestleMania 24 for a single WWE match, the crowd booed him louder than they did his opponent, The Big Show. So, what fuels this widespread disdain for the boxing sensation. According to Joe Rogan, it's his frequent displays of opulence that stir up the ire. Joe Rogan mentioned on the JRE podcast that people enjoy watching Floyd Mayweather fight largely because they dislike him. He pointed out that Mayweather often boasts about his wealth, flaunting his million-dollar watch, jet, and house, which generates envy and resentment. Rogan added that this behavior makes people want Mayweather to lose, but he emphasized that Mayweather isn't going to. Floyd Mayweather spares no effort in flaunting the opulence of his celebrity life, which only fuels his reputation as a villain among combat sports enthusiasts. Look at my jet. Look at my house. Look at this. He's like constantly showing you all these things that he has. Like he'll lay out watches in a hotel bed. Like uh, this is a, a million dollars worth of watches. This watch goes for $2 million. And they're like, this is my small watch that I take sometimes. But I want to show you when I show up, I bring out the big boy and it brings out this watch that's covered in diamonds. It's like fucking $5 million. And so you hate him. People hate him. He creates envy. Yes. Yeah, he creates envy, and you want him to lose, but he's not going to. He's not going to. He's too. He's so good. But the other thing is discipline. On the surface, he projects an image of arrogance, a persona he has carefully crafted for the public. Yet, beneath the veneer of showmanship lies a remarkable work ethic that truly sets him apart. The JRE host added that Floyd Mayweather isn't just a cocky guy who happens to be very skilled at boxing. 
He also possesses incredible discipline. In addition to Joe Rogan, Floyd Mayweather has earned accolades from another iconic boxer who recently lavished praise on him. Notably, this boxing legend asserted that money excelled at embodying the role of the villain more effectively than anyone else in the history of combat sports. He's not just this guy who's like really good at boxing he also has incredible discipline i've like, seen doesn't clips party. of him running in the middle of the night yeah. he would go to a nightclub with everybody else be drinking water everybody's partying having a good time floyd would leave the nightclub at 2 a.m have his bodyguards drive the car and he would run in front of the car for hours run home two o'clock in the morning run five six miles oscar de la hoya a former six weight world champion asserts that Floyd Mayweather played the perfect antagonist the boxing world needed, and he embraced that role with unwavering dedication. On the Club Shay Shay podcast, De La Hoya lauded Mayweather's commitment to preserving his peak physical condition, even post-retirement, a trait also highlighted by Joe Rogan. This steadfast discipline cements Mayweather's status in the GOAT conversation. Floyd was built to be the villain, and in the movie, you need the hero and the villain, and Floyd was the perfect villain, you know? People love to hate him. And guess what? He made a whole career about it, and he's one of the greatest. All of people tuned in to watch him lose, but a lot of people also tuned in to watch greatness, said Oscar De La Hoya. Despite Conor McGregor's reputation as the most infamous figure in combat sports, it's interesting to note that fans would still boo Floyd Mayweather more than the UFC star. During their joint appearance in Toronto for their fight's promotional tour, Mayweather made a spectacle of himself by parading a bag full of cash in front of both the audience and McGregor. What are you doing with a school bag on stage? You can't even read, yelled McGregor to the rapturous cheers from the fans. After defeating Conor McGregor seven years ago to extend his undefeated record to 50-0, he left the sport. Ever since, Mayweather has profited greatly from high-paying exhibition fights. Money has squared off with influencers Logan Paul, Deji, and Aaron Chalmers, as well as facing off against several MMA fighters and a former sparring partner. Over the weekend, the legendary five-weight world champion proved he's still a force to be reckoned with, delivering a commanding performance performance against John Gotti III in their rematch held in Mexico. Robert Garcia believes Floyd Mayweather could become a world champion again if he returns to professional boxing. When he battles rookies, Mayweather has hardly been impacted. Garika, who prepared Anthony Joshua for his rematch against Alexander Usyk, believes that if Floyd Mayweather makes a comeback to professional boxing, he could capture another world title. The 49-year-old maintains that nearly a decade after his last major bout, Terence Crawford and Jaron Ennis are the sole welterweight champion who could truly challenge Mayweather. Garcia told ES News, Whatever you say, whatever anybody wants to think, Mayweather could, because he's still active, he's still in shape. He could fight real fight. Not real fighters like Virgil Ortiz, Jaron Boots' Ennis, but Mayweather could still beat a lot of champions. Maybe at welterweight, he could beat most of the champions right now. He'll probably beat Imanta Stanionis, Mario Barrios, Brian Norman Jr. The fighter released by Joshua after a single bout believes that Mayweather could potentially capture a middleweight title, provided he faces the victor of Eris Landi Lara's WBA title defense against Danny Garcia, scheduled for September 14th. Garcia added, Mayweather can't fight a solid guy at 154 or 160. He could probably fight the winner of Danny Garcia and Eris Landi Lara. He could fight them and he could become champion, I think he could actually beat one of those. It appears improbable that Mayweather will ever decide to come out of retirement, the best ever, seemed pleased to profit from boxing amateurs while on a global tour. Mayweather is also intent on identifying the next big boxer in the United States. Make sure to check out some of our other videos on the screen if you enjoyed this one.